CTV spliced together three short sound bites. Sound bites spliced together, not even in the order that they were stated, to create an entirely made up sentence. Literally fake news. This story went to air in a way that it shouldn't Sir, have. no, you have called it a mistake. And with all due respect, a mistake is when I put milk in my coffee instead of cream. Uh, no, there, there have but never why? been But why? Why would you have not gone back? Never. Like, like, if I know somebody's done something wrong, and I know it's incredibly serious, wouldn't I want to go back and see if they've done it before? Like, I mean, I'm going to go to Ms. Shanahan now for six minutes. Go ahead, please. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, and I thank the witness for appearing before us today. Uh, Mr. Gray, uh, I'd like to ask you uh, what steps do CTV news journalists and newsroom managers typically take to ensure that aired reports meet the current journalistic and ethical standards? And I, I'm looking for a rather fulsome response because we want to understand uh, I don't know if anyone here has worked in a newsroom. Uh, I certainly have not. Um, we want to understand what the process is kind of from the beginning, you know, to the aired product. So I think the first and most important component part of my answer to your question is that we have a very rigorous and steadfast policies that spell out the expectations as to how our journalism is conducted. In addition to these policies, we adhere to the RTDNA Canada and Canadian Association of Broadcasters, respective co codes of ethics. Um, what occurs in the newsroom on a daily basis is that all of our team members uh, are expected to follow those policies to the absolute letter. And with respect to particular news stories, they are all vetted by a senior member of the team prior to their going to air to ensure that they are factually correct and that there are no legal issues with respect to the content. What specifically happened in this case on September the 22nd was that those policies and codes of ethics were violated by two individuals at CTV National News. In one case, a reporter altered a script after it had been approved by the producer, significantly changing the meaning and the intent of a particular clip to better suit the requirements of the story they were attempting to tell. In the second case, an editor spliced fragments of two segments of a statement together creating a clip that hadn't actually been spoken in order to cover a technical issue with the original recording. In my 33 years working in television news, I cannot recall anything similar to this ever happening before. So uh, how, do, how does it happen? How do the newsroom managers, I take it that would be the senior person that would be responsible uh, for making sure that this uh, didn't happen. So uh, there's questions there as to uh, where were they. Uh, how do they ensure that they are broadcasting uh, accurately and that it reflects the facts without any tampering? Like, do you have some kind of a technical way of, of checking that? And, and of course, we're living in, a, in an era today where you know, deep fakes and, and um, uh, you know, video alteration uh, and so on is, is um, almost child's play. So um, we have a elaborate process of um, verifying all facts. It's multi-layered. Um, but um, even with that check and balance, um, it would have been impossible in this case to, uh, to, to catch this error. Because as I said a few moments ago, uh, what happened here is that the script that was produced and approved by the producer was later altered and altered in two ways, by the reporter and by the editor. Again, this is something I have never seen and have no experience dealing with in, the, in my 33 years in television news. A long time now, uh, Mr. Gray, the Conservative Party leader 
has been attacking mainstream media and journalists with the intention to mislead and to make Canadians believe that news networks that they have trusted before are no longer trustworthy. Can you comment on the dangers that this presents to the state of Canada's information ecosystem and our democracy? Um, it, it, I mean, it's critically important that there be absolute uh, trust in all of our institutions, um, both uh, the media um, and um, our government. And there has been a general erosion uh, in that trust uh, over the last number of years. Um, I think that that is due to public statements by political leaders such as uh, Pierre Polyev. Oh, I don't. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily um, mm -hmm. say that. I, I think it is the result of a number of things. Probably the, the, the biggest one being that there has been a shift in our society where there is a more prevailing attitude that if you're not with us, you're against us. Oh, that's very interesting. Uh, how then are these risks then exasperated when a situation such as the one uh, with CTV News, as discussed earlier, happens? In other words, if you're not with us, you're against us kind of attitude. So... I think that, that you know the the key point to be made here, and and you know I I I have tried to do this in in my response to questions up to this point is is to say this um, we made a mistake. Um, it was a mistake that was impossible to foresee. We apologized immediately. We took follow up steps to ensure that. Um, our standards were being met. It was determined that they weren't. We, as a result of that, made the decision that the two employees involved would no longer be part of CTV News or Bell Media, okay. and then we apologized again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Uh, Ms. Shannon. Uh, Mr. Gray, on avant de commencer avec... Uh... Mr. Gray, before... Going to questions from Mr. Villemur. I think he is going to ask his questions in French. Interpretation is uh, is working. Okay. It is. Okay. Mr. Villemur, for six minutes. Yeah. Come on, say. Mr. Mr. Villemur, you have six minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gray, for being with us today. We are conducting a study on the impact of this information on parliamentarians. So for us, it's a risk to our democracy. And you touched upon a point, um, the point being confidence in politicians diminishing, and confidence in media is also diminishing. So can you elaborate a bit more on the source of why this is uh, happening? Um, It's 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 very difficult to say. I think I think you know if I was to if I was to suggest um, probably the biggest cause it is it is um, social media and the proliferation of social media um, and and the manner by which it is consumed. Um, you know, information that is shared on social media does not have the same rigorous journalistic. Um, and ethical standards applied to it um, as as we apply, as, you know, other media institutions like the Toronto Star, the Global and Mail, the National Post, um, Global News, uh, CBC apply to their operations. And as a result of that, um, it, it, it becomes much more difficult um, for people to know what they can trust who they can trust, what they should trust. Qu'est-ce que la désinformation? What is this information for CTV? What's your definition of it? Sorry, I'm, I'm not sure I understand your question. What was you? How do you define this information? Um, disinformation, from, from my perspective, is anything that is inaccurate. Est-ce que CTV a été la... Has CTV been the target of disinformation, for instance, from a foreign influence? 
Not that I'm aware of, no. CTV is pre. Is CTV concerned about the risk of this information uh, or foreign interference? Um, you know, I, 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 I am always concerned about the the accuracy and the veracity of the the journalism that we do based on the source material that's provided to us. It's why. It's why we use multiple stories, all independently verified by CTV. So this information is caused mainly by social media and you're the victims of it. Should I understand it that way? Uh, I, I would say that that, that is the prevailing uh, factor, at least from my perspective in this country. Un peu plus tôt, vous avez mentionné les... Earlier, you referred to the existence of an ethics code for journalists. Now, it's my area of expertise. The ethics code usually protects the people who drafted it rather than, uh, rather than other groups. So beyond having signed a code of ethics, how does CTV make sure that you're not broadcasting disinformation or misinformation? Can you please remind us the different stages that come into play? So, again, um, what happens is that um, as stories are assigned at the beginning of the day, as work proceeds on them throughout the day, uh, the individual reporters who are involved in the pursuit of those stories are checking in constantly with members of our management team and reviewing what they're gathering and the focus of, of their stories. Once they complete a final, what I'm going to call near final draft of their story, the script is submitted to a producer for review. That review ensures that the story is factually correct and there are no legal issues with it. And from that point, the reporter then works with an editor to complete that story for presentation on the television news. D'accord. Un peu plus tôt, vous nous avez, vous nous avez expliqué comment est survenu. Okay, you were also talking about how the mistake that happened took place, and I'd like to understand why this mistake happened. Was there a willingness to disinform? Was there malicious intent? And you mentioned that you let go these two employees, uh, despite them being... Uh, unionized, so you reacted quickly, but we're not really seeing into what exactly happened. There was no malicious intent um, from my perspective. Um, this was two people who were acting independently to um, make a particular story work on a given day. Donc, il y avait une volonté de désinformation. So there was a willingness to disinform. I, I, there was no intent to disinform. But the outcome is the same. Well, there was, there was no intent, but yes, the outcome was the same, and that is why we took the measures and steps that we did, and that these two individuals are no longer part of the CTV News team or Bell Media. Donc, vous avez agi sur la conséquence et pas sur l'intention. So, you reacted to the consequences, but not to the intention. Is that it? Well, as I said, there was no intent. Merci beaucoup. Okay, merci, uh, Monsieur Vilmure. Thank you, Monsieur Vilmure. Okay, we're going to go to Mr. Green now for six minutes. Go ahead, Mr. Green. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and welcome to the committee, Mr. Gray. I, I take earnestly your opening statement. Uh, when situations like this occur, the question is, like, what did you know? When did you know? What did you do about it? Sounds like you took pretty swift action. I do want to pick up on my colleague and my friend, Mr. Villemere's questions around the process. In a statement posted on social media on September 26th, you, it mentions that CTV's news editorial standards were not followed in this case. Which CTV news editorial standards were not followed in this case, resulting in these two employees being missed? Dismissed. Um, there were a number of, of specific policy violations. Um, there were three policy violations under the CTV News policy. Our policy on misrepresentation, our policy on the utilization of source material, and our policy on the use of sound, specifically interview clips. 
there were two um, instances in the RTDNA Code of Ethics that were violated, Article 1 as it relates to accuracy, and Article 3 as it relates to authenticity. And then with respect to the Canadian Association of Broadcasters Codes of Ethics, Clause 5, News, and Clause 6, Full, Fair, and Proper Presumption were violated. It sounds like there was a breakdown in, in a bunch of different ways. Um, are these standards similar to others that are in other news channels that you might know of? Is this an industry standard that the, you're referring to? Yes, the RTDNA Canada and Canadian Association of Broadcasters Codes of Ethics are an industry standard. And um, I would imagine, um, though I don't know for certain, each media organization in this country has its own policy. So what well. steps do CTV news journalists and newsroom managers typically take to ensure that aired reports meet the current journalistic and ethical standards? It's through that vetting process that I described earlier. And is a typically how many people would be involved in that process? Um, that vetting process could, I mean, it depends on the nature of the story. Um, Minimally, it would be a senior man, one senior manager who reviews a particular story. Um, it could be it could be as many as two or three, depending upon the nature of the story. We also might actually also have have a lawyer review the story, depending upon the particulars of it. I just want to get a sense for the the culture, the workplace culture there. But back in February, Bell Canada laid off six percent of its workforce. This immediately impacted CTV News. Uh, you're on the record in a story reported to say that multi-skilled journalists would replace news correspondents and technician teams reporting to CTV National News. So would these two people be considered multi-skilled journalists? No, actually, this these two individuals would have been constructing a story in what I'm going to call our more traditional format. It is... Um, of the style that we continue to apply for our teams in Toronto and Ottawa, uh, largely because of, because of the nature of the jobs that they do. Um, they cover um, stories in more depth, in more detail. Um, they are often involved in um, media scrums where there are multiple interviewers. Um, and there is... Um, the more likelihood that the stories that are covered in Toronto and Ottawa um, could potentially involve hundreds of people live on location. So I want to get to the heart of the matter. I know that you are in a very fast-paced environment. Certainly the journalists would be in a fast-paced environment. What Was it the case through your, uh, obviously your dismissal process, and I want to mention to you that being at committee covers you from, uh, you know, you have privilege to speak without it being held against you in civil proceedings. So perhaps you could talk about this. Is it the case that these people were just racing, cutting corners perhaps to meet a deadline? Were they under pressure? Um, you know, I'm still concerned with the points that my friend from the block brought up about the motive, because I'll, I'll tell you, sir, on the face value of it, even though this impacted the conservative party of which I have no ideological alignment with, it is still very concerning as it undermines uh, faith, not just in, in media, but in our democracy. So can you help us understand in your exit interviews, what was the motive specifically? Um, the, the, the motives were, were different in each case. So in the first case, um, the the clip was altered to take out the reference to the carbon tax with the explanation given that the story was being um, reduced in length for time. There was no specific ask of that reporter to alter their story for time. And it was explained to us that, um, that uh, that reporter believed that it was understood that the clip's nature was about the carbon tax election. With 15 seconds left, can you summarize the other side of it? Yes. Um, there was a technical error in our original record that um, 
prevented the video from being presented as was. The editor took the step to manipulate the the, the audio um, so that the video could cover it. How long had these two been working? Were they experienced? Was it like because there is a highly sorry? experienced. They were both highly experienced. And so I, I would put to you that I do, I would echo the concern of my conservative counterpart that if this was something they felt comfortable doing in this instant, what is to say that they hadn't done it in other instances? As I said, um, as I've said a couple of times, um, this is the first time I have ever seen anything like this occur in a newsroom in my 33 years experience working with television news. Okay. How would they know to have done? Oh, thank, okay. Mr. thank you. You know we're over, Mr. Green. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. I, I was just pressing my luck. <laughs> Um, that concludes our first round. Uh, I did allow extra time in that first round, uh, given the fact that we do have one witness here. I'm going to try to keep it a little bit tighter in the second round. I want to welcome Mr. Shear to committee. Uh, Mr. Shear, you have five minutes. Go ahead, sir. Oh, God. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I just have to go back to what you said. You said that the clip was altered. You showed Canadians something that never happened. And you're telling me now that there is no intent to misinform Canadians and that the reason for that altering of a clip was because it had to be uh, cut down for time. So the words that were cut out were carbon tax election. Okay, now I just timed myself. That took about 1.2 seconds. So you're telling me that there was no intent to misinform Canadians and they had to cut this down for length and that it would be understood that the quote from the Conservative leader was about a carbon tax election even though you removed the words carbon tax election. Can you understand how we're having a very difficult time accepting that? So I want to be clear. Um, what I indicated was that that was the explanation offered by the individual involved. That was not my explanation as do to you what accept transpired. That? Do you accept that? Or do you believe it was mis deliberate, deliberately done to mislead Canadians? I do not believe that it was deliberately done. But okay, so still, do, so there do you was accept a violation the, of our, there was a violation of our editorial standards. So, do you, so these do two you individuals the are no longer part of it. Do you accept the explanation that was given to you? We have made a decision that due to the violation of our editorial standards, that these individuals are no longer part of CTV News. So what do you, what do you believe the motive was? Uh, it's, it is not for me to determine what the oh. motive was. Okay. All right. Uh, CTV News is a division of Bell Canada, is that correct? It is. Uh, Bell Canada makes about $2.3 billion in profit based on 2023 numbers. Is, is that about correct? Would you agree with that? I'm not aware of how our company performs overall. Um, yeah, well, I can confirm that that's true. I'm, look, I'm looking at it on, on your website. Uh, CTV News. Does the CTV News division turn a profit for Bell Canada? No, it does not. We lose $40 million a year in news. Okay. Uh, Bell Canada makes a lot of money because it operates in a protected marketplace. Is that correct? Again, I, my responsibilities are for managing the operations of CTV News. I'm not an executive at Bell Canada. Okay, well, I can tell you that it does. It makes uh, an awful lot of uh, money off the backs of consumers uh, because of government policies. In fact, I have here that uh, Bell Canada in the last year lobbied this government over 50 times. That's more than four meetings with government officials a month. That's uh, more, <laughs> that's more face time with senior government levels than some Liberal MPs get. And I would just like to point out that Bell would fear a government that was led by a party that believed in consumer first types of policies and free market uh, and and uh, and pro competition policies, and would benefit greatly from a party in power that continued the uh, status quo, or even worse, uh, uh, providing uh, you know t taking away more avenues for consumer choice, which would allow Bell to continue to make that kind of profit margin. Is CTV News's viewership increasing 
or decreasing year over year? Would, would, would the viewership this year be higher or lower than last year? Uh, there has been a consistent erosion in viewership in broadcast media in this country uh, for a number of years. It's falling year over year. I wonder why, after, like a, when you get caught putting uh, things on the air that you then have to admit never actually happened, I can understand why uh, viewership as well, well, well can, as trust would erode. I, I just want I I only can give a, you a couple of specific. Sorry, I, 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 don't, I only have about a minute left, so I just want to make uh, understand one thing. Uh, does, does CTV News have a diversity target? Uh, our goal is to reflect um, Canada and the current visible minority um, percentage in this country, according to the 2021 census, is 26 percent. Do you, you have a target for diversity of political viewpoints at CTV News? It's our job, as I said earlier, to present all sides of public policy issues in a balanced, accurate and fair way. That doesn't answer the question. Do you have a specific policy to ensure that the editorial direction, the journalists and the producers at CTV News reflect the Canadians' political spectrum? It's not the job of journalists to reflect the Canadian political spectrum. It's our job to present stories in an unbiased, balanced, accurate and fair way. No, but you're telling me you have no way of determining whether or not the producers, the editors and the journalists all have the same liberal bias. You have no way to determine that. Quick, quick response, Mr. Gray, please. Our, our, our team do not have a liberal bias. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Shear. Uh, we're going to go to Mr. Fisher on Zoom. Mr. Fisher, you have five minutes. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Gray, for being here. I have to say that uh, um, the questions posed by uh, my colleagues from all parties uh, have been uh, excellent, and I'm sure you've completely expected them. There'll be a little bit of repetition uh, just for some clarity. I want to just uh, reiterate a few of the things that you said in your opening statement. You claim to be the most trusted news source. Source. You said responsibility, you have a responsibility to manage your own affairs. Um, that, that, that strikes me as something that's it's difficult to jive with when we, we're talking about the elephant in the room today. We're talking about the broadcast. We're talking about, um, you know, inaccuracies regarding a leader of a Canadian political party. Um, can you, for, and again, I, I think you may have touched on some of these, but can you go over with some clarity the steps that you've taken to ensure that you can still say that you at Bell Media, at CTV News, have journalistic integrity and the ethics that uh, you must have under that Bell Media umbrella. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer your question in two parts. Um, first, uh, I'm going to talk about this particular incident. Um, we had the matter brought to our attention. We immediately apologized. I took the further steps because of the nature of what had transpired to initiate a fulsome investigation into what I was concerned was a very serious breach of our ethics and our policies. And we made the decision as a result of that to do two things. We made the decision to terminate the two individuals who were involved in that policy breach and we went to, um, we took the step to apologize one more time. I think that is entirely appropriate given what transpired. And I think that is indicative of the manner by which we take seriously the trust that Canadians have in us. The second component part to my answer is this. Um, Canadians in this country overwhelmingly choose CTV as their number one source for news with respect to broadcasts at the local level and at the national level every day of the week. And we are also the number one source for digital news in this country. That is not us pandering to an audience. That is people tuning into us because for 60 years we have presented a product 
that they know, they like, and they trust. I want to thank you. for, And you seem like a very earnest person. And I want to thank you for the tone that you've uh, struck here. Um, you, you said you've never seen anything like this before. Yet you also said it's impossible. It was impossible to catch this error. Have there been other errors like this that you, you know, it was impossible to catch them and they've gotten through? Can you give um, me other examples of something like this that might have happened that slipped through that you that uh, n- n- you didn't get caught? I mean, errors happen in news. Um, mm-hmm. It's the very nature of um, what it is we do. We try our absolute best to prevent them from going to air um, or being published. Um, we are never happy. Um, we are we are. We are absolutely angry at ourselves when there is a failure in our checks and balances. But, you know, they happen, you know, in large measure because because of the deadline pressure that exists and and by virtue of the volume that we produce. CTV produces approximately 25,000 hours of local news a year. We produce approximately 20,000 hours of specialty news a year. And we produce almost 500 hours of national news broadcasts a year. So, you know, there, there is a massive volume there. Um, There is, you know, we go to air with, with stories that have been vetted and screened and we do our absolute best to present uh, material in a in a factual, accurate, balanced way at all times, but sometimes, like everyone, mistakes occur. Okay, are those uh, employees? Uh, they're yeah. gone from CTV. Are they gone from Bell completely? These two individuals are no longer members of either CTV News or BCE. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Chair. Monsieur Vilmier pour uh, deux minutes. Mr. Vilmur for uh, two minutes and 30 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Before asking my first question, I'll just make a comment on the diversity of political points of view because words convey a meaning. And I was surprised and offended um, when I saw Bloc Québécois being qualified as a separatist because it was used by Jean Chrétien at the time and today it contains a certain form of negativity, the use of the word itself, but our political position also vis-a-vis English-speaking Canada. So when you, we talk about diversity of point of view, I'm a little skeptical. So would you have a comment on that? Um, I mean, we, we, as I've said uh, repeatedly, endeavor to cover public policy issues in a balanced um, way um, so Canadians can make informed decisions on them. Um, you know, we, we strive, we endeavor to inc- include all points of view. Um, I want to tell you something. I mean, you cover different points of view. I don't have a problem with that. But every time the word separatist, uh, the word separatist is used, it's a, it's a judgment call. So finding a synonym, finding another term is what I'm talking about. But I'd like to come back to the problem that's before us today. And I listened to your explanations, and you are referring to a loss of credibility and confidence going down in the, in media outlets. But, um, and I, I'm, I'm trying to keep an open mind but I'm having a hard time having more confidence before your, like after your testimony compared to before. So what can you tell us to reassure us and propose some solutions so that the public at large is comfortable and has confidence in CTV? Um, I fully anticipate that as a result of what transpired in this particular case, although it was an isolated incident, um, from my perspective, um, we are going to have to work to rebuild 
a degree of trust with Canadians and with our audience. Merci beaucoup. Merci, uh, Monsieur Vilmire. Mr. Green, for two and a half minutes. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Mr. Gray, with the experience that you have and with the resources that you have uh, within your reach, what learnings would you provide other news stations in the mainstream environment here in Canada? We have an election coming up. Obviously, this is going to be something closely watched. What have you learned from this situation and what would be your advice to uh, to the other competitors that are in the market in terms of uh, making sure this doesn't happen again? Well, I think first and foremost, um, it's absolutely critical that we all are reminding our team members of our policies and our expected editorial standards. Uh, I, and I, th I think that is probably the biggest and most important learning for us. Um, can't just take it for granted um, because that, you know, that is the something that probably has been the prevailing approach and attitude in, in newsrooms for a number of years. Um, so, so that would be number one. Uh, number two, I think it is the constant reinforcement of what I've said repeatedly, that our job is to present all sides of public policy issues. It is to function in a balanced uh, way Accuracy and fairness are of critical importance. Um, that's our job. That's our role. Mr. Gray, I do have to reclaim my time. I have about a minute left. Uh, you've stated the ways in which CTV is dealing with this. I talk about there's like an ecosystem uh, within the news media sector. So in the event that you were to rebroadcast reports or take information from other news channels, are there any tools or methods that CTV News can use to ensure that these reports do not contain misinformation or disinformation? So um, with respect to Canadian stories um, on, in broadcast, uh, we run 100% of our own material. We do not source Canadian story content for broadcast from any other source in this country. Uh, with respect to international news material, um, we, you know, we only align ourselves with organizations that have similar editorial standards to ours. That's helpful. Thank you very much for your appearance here today. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Green. Uh, I understand Mr. Cooper and Mr. Caputo are going to split their time at two and a half minutes each. We're going to start with Mr. Cooper. Go ahead, and then we're going to follow that with Mr. Housefather, okay? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Gray, you have repeatedly stated here today that you believe that there was no intent to mislead. Let's look at what happened. CTV spliced together three short sound bites. Sound bites spliced together, not even in the order that they were stated, to create an entirely made-up sentence, literally fake news, that entirely changed the meaning of what Pierre Polyev said. So, on what basis do you conclude that there was no intent to mislead? On what basis exactly? Two now former staff members of CTV News acted in a way that was in breach of our editorial standards. You made a conclusive statement that there was no intent to mislead. So I'm asking you, on what basis do you draw that conclusion? Based on 33 years of experience, and this being the Mr. first Gray, and only Mr. time, Mr. Gray, no one believes like you. And you happened. said, you said, for example, that uh, that the employee who altered the, the video, one of the two employees, said that uh, he or she believed uh, that uh, it would be understood to be about the carbon tax election. Yet nowhere in the report is there any mention of a carbon tax election. So on what basis could anyone reasonably believe that that statement was made in that context when there was no context? Quite the opposite, disinformation. I disagree. Dis it's a fact that there was no mention of a carbon tax election. You have no credibility, and in the face of the fact that CTV peddled a fraudulent news story, and you haven't apologized, 
you haven't explained the basis upon which you have asserted that there was no intent to mislead to simply say you disagree isn't good enough no one believes you we have Mr. in fact apologized twice okay. you haven't apologized at all you said there was no intent to mislead no intent to mislead but you can't even articulate the basis of why there was no intent to mislead. We have apologized Say that, twice. But, but I asked you to provide a basis, and you haven't been able to provide a basis. 2.30. Go ahead, Mr. Caputo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, Mr. Gray, I take issue with uh, something that you said, and it's actually been said a number of times at this committee. You characterize this as a mistake. Do you stand by that? It was a... It, the, vi the violation Sir, of I asked our you, editorial standards... Sir, I asked you, was this a mistake... You've said that before. You stand by the fact it was a mistake. Is that correct? I, I stand by the fact that um, Sir, this, this story went to air in a way that it shouldn't Sir, have. no, you have called it a mistake. And with all due respect, a mistake is when I put milk in my coffee instead of cream. This was a massive error in judgment. This was a previously unforeseen breach of trust from what was once a trusted media organization. And you have said, picking up on what Mr. Cooper said, the explanation given was not to mislead Canadians. Sir, do you even believe that? I stand by my testimony today wholeheartedly and unreservedly. You stand by your testimony that the intent was not to mislead Canadians. Did you talk to these people and get their motive, sir? There was a fulsome investigation. But I asked, done I asked whether, what sir, transpired. sir, with all due respect, I didn't ask whether there was an investigation. I asked whether you spoke with them. Yes or no? I did not speak with them beyond having an initial conversation with the reporter the okay. night that this was brought so, to our attention. So you had a brief initial conversation. And based on that, you come to committee and say that, that there was no malevolent intent to mislead based on that. And I ask whether you believe that and you stand by it. With all due respect, sir, that is an untenable claim that you have arrived at. We are getting ready here for a carbon tax election. At the end of the day, is there one thing that you have done, that you have implemented to ensure that this won't happen again? Just one thing. Yes, we've terminated two individuals. No, no, sir, you have countless other employees. I mean, that, that was possibly the worst answer you could have given. What about moving forward? That is retrospective. What about moving forward? Because, sir, this is what I can say. Why is it that it always is the Conservatives that are fighting this, this battle? Why is it? Why is it that when it comes to Justin Trudeau and the Liberals, they are not misquoted, but when it comes to Conservatives and Pierre Polyev, this type of thing can happen, and that is shameful. I'm going to have thank to end you. it there. I, then, Mr. I disagree Gray? with the characterization. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Housefather, for five minutes. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gray, when you hire employees, do you ask them what political party they support? No, we do not. Would it be impermissible for you to do so? Um, I would think under I'm, law it would be if you... Yeah, I, I would expect that that would be not permissible. Okay. So in, in this case, but I, no, so I, I, I understand f you know, the, the general principle that CTV News is not trying to be biased in one direction or another, but let me come back to this incident because I think there are some unresolved questions that I have. Um, in this incident, did you interview personally the two journalists uh, or the two people in the newsroom that were fired? Uh, no, I did not. Okay, so I, that I, actually surprises me. You did not take the, have you taken the time since the incident to talk to the two of them directly? I initiated, I initiated a due process investigation into this matter that was conducted by professionals and I was apprised at all steps as to what discussions were occurring and I came to the conclusion following that investigation that it was necessary for these individuals to no longer be members of the CTV news team. Which which I agree with because it sounds it sounds like like a step which needed severe disciplinary action. But my question is today you've testified as to their motive and you stated you don't believe that they did something for 
wrong reasons. You, 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 I, I, I won't use Mr. Caputo's word of mistake, although I think you did use that. How would you know that if you haven't directly taken the time to speak to them to understand? So based on the explanations offered. Well, that's all secondhand. That's all hearsay. Three You've reasonable. come here to testify on behalf of CTV, and you didn't actually take the time yourself in what you described yourself as an incredibly serious incident, one that was very embarrassing to the network. Why wouldn't you have not personally taken the time to meet with these two people to understand? Have you reviewed previous, uh, previous footage um, of this reporter and of this other of this producer to check to see whether they did this in any other occasion? Have you gone back to previous footage? Uh, no, there, there have been But why? Been any why would you have there, not gone back to never. Like, like, if I know somebody's done something wrong, and I know it's incredibly serious, wouldn't I want to go back and see if they've done it before? Like, I mean, you only had to randomly look at, you know, let's say take 10 of 100 uh, of, of, the, of the different uh, stories covered by this reporter to, to look at that. Why would CTV have not done that? I didn't feel it was necessary. Do you feel it's... I mean, I, I can say it's not only the conservatives, from my perspective, that have concerns, because I'm not a conservative, and I have concerns about the way it sounds mm -hmm. like this matter was treated in terms of, I, I don't think it was taken seriously enough. I, I, again, have you changed any policies? Have you changed any company policies as a result of this incident on a forward-looking basis? We took appropriate action in this case through two apologies, I, I'm not questioning your apologies. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not questioning your apology. I believe you apologized. I believe you fired two people. I, I just want to understand, as a result of what happened, something, two people were allowed to do something that violated policy. What has been done to prevent two people in the future from doing exactly the same thing? So what has changed to, in your policy? I want to correct um, something that you just said. Okay. Two people were not allowed to violate policy. Two people violated policy and there were consequence consequences for that violation of policy I know, i'm not trying to suggest ctv give permission to the two of them to violate policy the two of them did violate a policy what has been done to prevent two people from doing exactly the same thing tomorrow as i've said repeatedly this is the first time i have ever experienced anything like this in 33 years I know, but you haven't gone back to look at the footage of what these people had done before. You didn't go back to previous stories to check to see whether they did it and just nobody was ever aware of it because no conservative staffer ever caught it. Have you, why would you not, will you undertake to the committee to go back and look at 10 previous stories done by these two people to see whether there was anything in there that you may not, or CTV is not aware of? I don't think it's necessary because okay. there have Thank never you. been previous complaints Thank about you, Mr. the conduct Chair. of these individuals. Okay, thank you, uh, 